Good morning, Tarot Sphere. It's Holly from Cape Cod Creatures, and I am here today with a review for the mass produced US Games version of the Eight Coins Tattoo Tarot. I have been following Eight Coins on Instagram for a while, and I was really bummed to miss out on her indie printing of the deck. But uh, thankfully, US Games picked it up, and after much waiting, it took about a year, I want to say, for the deck to come out on. Um, Mass, for, for it to come out mass pr mass printed. I finally broke down and I ordered it. So we're going to do a little flippy through. All right, I'll see you guys in a second. So here we have the Eight Coins Tattoo Tarot. It comes in a large clamshell box with the little finger hole cutouts on each side. You know I love that. And the back of the box has a brief description of what the set includes. Now this is an 82 card set because it includes a handful of original cards. Um, I guess when the artist was creating the set, some of the cards were colored in, some weren't, and she's reworked some of the art to give it a more consistent style. Um, yeah, so anyway, we're going to take, I'll, I'll cover that when we go ahead and talk about the, the deck. Uh, but the two-piece clamshell is finished in black on the inside, and then you get a foldy, uh, a little fold-out mat. It's for her rose spread. I'm not going to spread this out here because it's ginormous, but it's basically like a like a mini wheel of the year. And then you have the guidebook. The guidebook is substantial, so it is um, quite a thick little doohickey, and it's full co full color. The thing that I do like about the guidebook is the sides are tabbed, so you can easily reference where the suit breakdown is here. For example, this is the wands, and then if you need cups, is right there, and then this is the sword, and these are the uh, pentacles. So you can quickly, just by looking at the side of the book, you can reference where each of the suit breakdown is, and then this would of course be the major arcana right here. Yep, so there are the majors. And then you've got a little bit about the imagery and symbolism and her process. Um, you get, I think there are some spreads in here. I not, where are some spreads? No, no. Oh, you get the rose spread at the back again. So this is the, this is what the rose spread looks like. So I'm not going to unfold the whole big play mat that came with it, but this gives you an idea of what the spread looks like. Uh, three on top, three on the bottom, one in the middle. So yeah, and then she, like again, she goes into some of the cards and uh, some of the extra ones. So the drawings that are like mostly notable to her and why they why they were left unfinished and what was going on. So that is the guidebook. Next we have the deck itself. Now there is no, I was kind of hoping honestly for some sort of mini box in here to hold the deck. Instead you get just a regular cardboard insert. Um, I don't know, I'll probably wind up getting a pouch or something for the deck. It's, it's, a, it's a big set to carry around. So if you're just working with the deck, it does get a little cumbersome. Um, okay, so the I did look at these cards beforehand. Sometimes I like to go into uh, my my card sets blindly and just kind of unwrap them as we go here and I'm glad that I did um, because I needed to put them in order and we'll talk about that in a second but first a note on the cardstock it's your typical US games cardstock slippery thin flexible it's you know if you're if you're used to Llewellyn or US games um, it's not going to be anything new to you uh, but the and the card size is a little bit larger than a Llewellyn deck and I think that's because the borders on here are so large. But anyway, you could easily trim it and still have a decently sized deck if you wanted to. Um, otherwise, you can just leave it be. I'll probably just leave it be. Sorry, just had to get my camera to focus a bit. But um, as you can see on the bottom of each card, you'll get actually the number of what drawing each card is. So the Fool, which is the first card in the deck, is actually drawing number 33 for her. So you can put the deck in order to see her artistic journey, which is kind of neat. But I think for the purposes of a flip through, I like my cards in order of, you know, ma like the, the majors and then the minors. So I reordered them for the purpose of this flip through, but it's actually kind of cool to take a peek at um, how her style progresses as she creates each card. 
So for the cards we have, um, again, we're going to start with the Fool, with this, which is the snake and the rose. And I really like this imagery because you're blindfoldedly sniffing this rose, but who knows if you're going to get bitten by the snake. And I think that you still get a feel for the Fool without having it be your 100% traditional Fool imagery. And then you've got the Magician. Um, and she's included all of the tools in the Magician card, which I find to be really neat. So there you've got the Pentacle, the... Um, the sword, the cup, and then it's really hard to see, but I think the wands are floating around. There's the wand right there, right in the background. And then I don't know if you can also tell, but there's some sort of serpent imagery in here as well. So here's the tongue for the snake and the teeth and then the eyeball, but it's worked its way into the hand. So that's kind of cool. Oh, and there's a little rattlesnake right there. Then you've got the high priestess. The Empress, the Emperor, the Hierophant. I like the idea of a two headed crow and a scarab for that. The Lovers, the Chariot, Strength, the Hermit, the Wheel of Fortune, Justice. The Hanged Man, which is actually a woman in this card. Death. I really love this death card. It's very, um, like it ties in some elements of the traditional Rider Waite imagery. Now, I don't know if you've noticed, but the style is kind of disparate from card to card, which I don't necessarily mind, but I do kind of wish that it had been consistent throughout. Like when you follow her Instagram, this is more of her traditional style. And then where this one is like really sketchy, I would have preferred more rich imagery, like just complete throughout the card. Otherwise, because this kind of has the feel almost of a collaborative deck when you um, really kind of do readings and stuff with it. So this is Temperance and there's blood in that cup for whatever reason. We're just gonna pretend it's Fruit Punch. And then you've got the devil, the tower. Again, this is more of her, more of her traditional style. And this one is not off, but it's like, it's not quite the same as far as the feels concerned. And then this is the star. And then this is where we get one of the double images. So this would be her earlier work here with the, with the, um, the reddish blonde. And then you've got the, the more of a, um, the more stylized, I call it, like it's got like a 1920s circusy vibe. Um, I don't know, like I, I, I much prefer this one, but I still think both are a little, this is more reflective of her current style. So I, I mean, like I'm glad she redid it. They're both, they're both good cards though. And then you've got the moon. I love that there is a full on lobster here. Um, but I will always love my lobsters. The sun, judgment, where again we see devil imagery. I find that to be really interesting. Um, for whatever reason, she decided to put the devil in there. And then we have the world. And now we're on to the pentacles. We've got the ace, two, three. I, I don't know why she chose to put like these little prairie dog groundhog thing guys here, but, um, I kind of really love them. Every time I see them, they make me smile. The four. Actually, you know what? A note on the four. I really love this one. This one kind of reminds me of the saying, um, Nero fiddles while Rome burns. I don't, I don't know. It's kind of, it's kind of, um, not necessarily controlling. Well, Nero was a little controlling, but for the wrong reasons, um, it's hanging on to your, it kind of reminds, it also reminds me of like the, this is fine meme. So it's hanging on to your wealth and your riches and ignoring the fact that everything else is like going down in flames around you. So I don't know. I just really enjoy that for that reason. And then we've got the five, six, this reminds me of a Dr. Seuss painting for some reason. I think it's the way that the fingers are. The seven, 
I love this for the seven though. Come on, that's really cute. And where it's growing out of the palm of your hand, that's adorable. The eight, here we see our first like really modern image. Um, this is, you know, so, like somebody at a drafting table as an artist. I'm sure this is supposed to be a representation of her, which is kind of cool to see her put herself in her own deck, especially where she's on that journey. And this was drawing number seven for the record. So this is one of her earlier works where the deck is concerned. Then you've got the nine and the ten. And we're on to uh, the, the courts. So you've got the page, the knight, the queen, and the king. And we're on to the swords now. So we've got the ace of swords. Um, I don't know. Like, it's something about this. Like, I like it, but I don't. I think it's the open brain that I don't necessarily enjoy, but that doesn't mean that other people wouldn't enjoy it. And then we've got the two. I really love the imagery in this one. It's very traditional, it, but it's it's still her style. And this too, again, I mean, we're getting back to like, this is, this is number 62. So more developed in, um, you know, more closer to her current, like she's definitely got, if you follow, like I said, if you follow eight coins, Instagram, she's definitely got a certain aesthetic and this is closer to it. The four of swords. I really love the imagery in this one. The five, six. So this is a weird, I, I, I like the take on this one. Um, so it's not your traditional gondola imagery where you've got like the, the six swords in the boat with the guy like pushing them across, pulling them across the river. Here you have, this is more of an eight of a cups kind of a vibe. Both cards are about moving on, um, but maybe for different reasons. And this one, you've got the sword left at the dock and the person is just sailing away from the conflict completely. The seven, the eight of swords, the nine. I like this one for the nine. It's very nightmare and anxiety inducing. And the 10, that one is in all sorts of interesting like his hands are cut off and poked onto the swords, which are actually coming up and through him as opposed to down and into. So that is quite the, um, it paints a picture. Let's just put it that way. And we've got the ace, oh, I'm sorry, the page. I do love, look at that little chickadee right there. The knight. The queen and the king. And now we're on to the wands. So we've got the ace, two, three. Actually, you know what? I really, I'm going to just make a little note on this one too. I like that we're seeing um, the figure in the two of wands head on. Normally you just see his back. And same thing with the three of wands. Um, this one is more about like the, the, the wands and the overlooking as opposed to just the guy sitting there. I, I really like these two and three of wands here. The four of wands. The five. I like this for five. Um, I don't know. I just, I'm, I'm a sucker for reworked traditional rider weight. So this is the, the point where all the sticks are actually converging during the battle. It's like she just focused in on that. I really enjoy that one for the five. And then we've got the six, the seven, this one, if you're not, if you're not, um, really paying attention to the number up here, you could probably easily confuse this for the eight of wands. Um, it's not so, it's not so eight of wandsy, but again, with like just that movement in the direction of the wands, you could totally, yeah, but it's, I, I do like the, it, it is very nice and reflective of how the eight of wands usually when you're, when you're fighting 
in a situation like that or experiencing the kind of, the kind of conflict that you, I'm sorry, the seven, when you're experiencing the kind of conflict that you would with the seven of wands, you're coming from a place of, um, you know, just, just conviction in your beliefs. So I do like the imagery for that. And then this is the eight of wands. So this is kind of wheel of fortune-y to me. I almost wish that this was the wheel of fortune card. Um, but this is like the incoming news, swift movement, um, just like fast, just, 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 I don't know, just the eight of wands normally means like swift to me. It's, it's like, it's very charity, but here she managed to, um, she managed to, to make it a wheel of fortune, which, I mean, really, when you receive the kind of news that you do from Eight of Wands, oftentimes it can be like a twist of fate. So I do enjoy that little twist on that card. And then here is where we run into another duplicate card. So this would be the Nine of the nine of Wands. So here, um, if you purchased her deck originally, you got this one where it's the sketch. And then that would be the first card that she ever drew. And then here she's got it finished off. So this would be the card at, um, you know, number 79. And I have to say, like, if I had purchased the deck and received a card that wasn't colored in yet, I would probably be a little upset about it. But I do enjoy here. And look, it's almost like he's a part of the wall that he's constructed. This is a pretty rad card. I'm just going to stick that to the side. And then here we have the Ten of Wands. So you've got a bird trying to carry all of these sticks. And every time I see this card, all I can think of is what is the airspeed velocity of an unladen swallow. And for our Monty Python fans, you are very welcome. And then we've got the page. Fox imagery for the wands is very popular. We just did the Tarot Fauna review where they used foxes throughout the entire suit of wands. So you've got the page the knight, the queen, and the king. And then you've got the, the suit of cups. So we've got the ace of cups, the two. I really enjoy this two of cups because the two of cups isn't always about romance. Sometimes it's about business partnerships and whatnot. So you can actually um, take this either way. And here we have the Three of Cups, the Four. Oh, wait, the Three. I have, I have a note on the Three. So the Three of Cups, this is another one where we get different cards. And honestly, I kind of like them both. I would have loved to have seen this, um, you know, done colored in. And then this one is, I mean, it's still, it's gorgeous. The imagery is still beautiful you still get kind of a three of cups feel from it maybe a little less celebratory though but I, I would have loved to have seen like I said this one just happen a little bit more so this is card number two and then this is card number 81 then we have the four the five I do love the Six of Cups. Look at how look at how young those kids are. And that's really something that is kind of lost in the Rider weight. I think because of the way the wood cutting is done, um, <clears throat> it's like the block printing, the age and the nostalgia of that is kind of lost. And then we've got the Seven. And again with that snake, there's the snake from the beginning of the, from the Fool card the eight more traditional rider weight imagery like that that moon is basically the same the nine I really enjoy this nine of cups card I will take a nine of cups that is lacking that smug asshole any day of the week and the ten of cups so this is another card that was reworked so here is her fourth version. So this is card number four for her. So the fourth deck that she created along the way. And then the new Ten of Cups. And honestly, I like them both. Um, it's I, I, like I have a hard time deciding which card I'm going to leave in the deck. And sometimes I just can't. So I'll leave them both. But you can definitely see where her style has grown. 
<clears throat> and it just it's this is beautiful so anyway that is that for the 10 and then we've got the page with a koi oh, I do love that little koi fish the knight the queen and the king all right and that's it for the flip through you guys we'll see you for a shuffle and a read Okay, so the deck should shuffle relatively well. It does fit in the hand, but because it is a slightly larger size, it's a bit of a stretch to get my fingers all the way across the top on the full deck. Um, that being said, again, if you're used to, you know, US Games is pretty much standard size. If you have the Spirit Song or um, any other US Games deck, you should be in pretty good shape where shuffling it is concerned. Um, maybe with the exception of some of the regular rider weights. Um, they, they are a little bit smaller, but for their art decks, they tend to go a little bit bigger. Um, you can do hand over hand shuffling pretty easily. Um, I just tried to do it the long way. I always fail at that. You can do it hand over hand the, um, the sideways way and it, that goes pretty fast. As far as rifling and bridging, I still have to break this deck in. I've only used it a couple of times, but you get a decent intermingling and it bridges, it bridges okay. I, you do have to have it on a flat surface though. Sometimes I'm able to like just pick it up and bridge and show you guys, but um, it doesn't necessarily work out every time. All right, so I think we've got some pretty good shuffling going on. So we're going to go ahead and pull three cards and do a sample reading. I like that one and that one and that one. Okay. So we pulled, ooh, the page of cups. And then we also pulled the tower. Oh no, not the tower. And then we also pulled the queen of pentacles. Hmm. Okay, so this is an interesting read, actually. So the Page of Cups is usually somebody who is, um, you know, they, they herald in ideas and thoughts and feelings. So this would be like a feeling of newness, um, you know, new love, new emotion, new whatnot. Uh, sometimes it could also mean a person. Um, but because we're going from the Page of Cups with a tower event to the Queen of Pentacles, I'm going to go ahead and say that there is, um, this to me is a reading that's more about growth. Um, all right. So you start out as the Page of Cups where you kind of get like, maybe you have some emotions or some, like there's a new crush or there's something that you really, really love or whatnot. And you feel all mushy about it. But you've got to learn a harsh lesson about it, um, or at least about the way you approach this this feeling of newness. So a tower event is usually, I'm not going to say a violent upheaval, but it shakes things up pretty good. Like this is a getting fired, getting broken up with, like, you know, losing your job, stubbing your toe real bad. Like, like there's nothing, there's nothing good about the tower. So, um, you know, getting him, having a, like a public embarrassment, uh, you know, that kind of thing, ripping, ripping the seat of your pants. I actually had that happen to me once. It was really bad. Um, it was leggings and they had a tear and then the, the, the tear just ran like a stocking and it was really embarrassing. Um, so that was my tower moment. Um, so yeah, the tower, so you have a tower moment, but that leads to the queen of pentacles, right? So, the Queen of Pentacles is a woman who very much nurtures. She's almost like Empress energy. She's very nurturing, but she's nurturing where the um, where the the five senses are concerned. It's almost like have you ever had like one of those moments where like a grandmother or an aunt or a mom who was just like, "Eat! I'm gonna like I'm gonna feed you and I'm gonna tuck you in with your blankies and like I just love like she's just very mothering. Um, not helicopter parenty about it either, but like you come home and like there's a pie on the windowsill or some fresh baked cookies for after school snack. Like that's that's kind of the same energy that I get from the um, Queen of Pentacles. Also, somebody who um, knows how to take a good idea and make some money out of it. So somebody very crafty, that kind of thing. Um, so I just think, you know, you need like right now you've got like some newness and some silliness and some emotional whatever going on. And 
that's going to come to a screeching halt. And normally when you get the tower card too, either it shows up in the past, which means it's already happened, or if it's in the future, it's kind of like a kick in the pants, kind of like a, this is going to happen one way or another, and we can do it your way, or we can do it my way, um, says the universe, and you're not going to like the universe's way. So there is a chance for you to kind of maybe re like, again, shift gears, Think about maybe you want to get a little bit out of your heart and a little more into your head and just really connect with that energy. But some growth is going to happen for you and it's going to be pretty sudden. So that is the sample reading with the eight coins tattoo tarot. I thought it was pretty decent, you guys. So, I mean, for those of us that missed out on the indie printing, it's always sad to miss out on an indie printing of a deck. But I am very happy with my mass marketed version and... Uh, yeah, I'm super glad that I added this one to my collection. Um, now we just have to answer the age-old question, to trim or not to trim. Thank you guys for watching the review. I thought it might be fun to do a little spread so you can see everything that comes jam-packed into that little box. Except for that little doobly nugget crystal, that one is mine. Um, so yeah, if you liked the review and you like my other content, I would love if you could like and subscribe. Also, if you want to help keep my forum Tarosphere advertising free, I have a link to my coffee account below. You can quote unquote buy me a coffee. Um, if and for other artists that are just discovering um, how to try and fund themselves online. That's an awesome way to um, let people crowdfund you and to also not be obnoxious about it. So yeah, uh, definitely check out 8coins Instagram. The link for that will be below as well. And thank you Tarosphere for watching. I appreciate it and I hope you all have a wonderful day. Bye!